Like all species, plants are subject to the mechanisms of evolution. Plants have evolved vascular tissues that help them transport materials among various structures, and this has resulted in some very tall plants. In fact, plants include the tallest species on Earth, Sequoia sempervirens, commonly called the coast redwood, can reach up to 379 feet in height, not including the roots. Plants are anchored into the ground by structures called roots. A root is an organ of a vascular plant that in addition to anchoring the plant to the soil, provides water and mineral support to the plant. Water is a main component in the process of photosynthesis, and it's also needed in the transport of materials from the ground up to the leaves and from the leaves back down to the roots. Although the entire root system helps anchor a plant, usually the absorption of water and minerals happens near the tips of the roots, where a large number of tiny root hairs greatly increase the surface area of the root. The difference in solute concentration between the inside and the outside of the roots results in water moving into the root by osmosis. The special channel proteins called aquaporins that help facilitate the movement of water and ions across the cell membrane. Plants also use a proton pump that uses energy from ATP to move protons out of the cell against their gradient. This action forms electrical and proton gradients, with the inside of the cell now being more negative than the outside, positive ions such as potassium can move into the cell. Once water has been taken into the roots, it has to be transported to the different areas of the plant, where it is needed, especially into the leaves. To do this, plants have evolved a series of tubes called xylem. Water and ions pass from the roots into the xylem through two different ways. The first path is called the apoplast, the continuous network of cell walls and extracellular spaces in plants through which materials can pass without having to go into the cell itself. If this is used, the water and nutrients never have to enter the cell itself. Apoplasts work very quickly. The other pathway is referred to as the symplast. Using this pathway involves the water and minerals passing through the cytoplasm of the plant cells. The pathway is continuous because the cytoplasm of one cell is connected to that of its neighboring cells by small channels known as plasmodesmata. After passing through one or both of these pathways, the water and minerals reach the endodermis or inner layer of the root called the cortex. A special hydrophobic structure called the Kasparian strip surrounds each endodermal cell. Because it is waterproof, the Kasparian strip forces the water and minerals into the symplast, so all the water and nutrients are now being channeled through it. This action pushes the solution into the xylem so that it can then be transported up through the xylem toward the leaves. At this point, it is called xylem sap. The largest issue facing moving water in the xylem is that the water has to move against gravity. Scientists have developed a model that shows how water is able to move from the soil into the roots, up the stem, and to the leaves. This model is called the Transpiration Cohesion Tension Model, and it consists of three main parts. Transpiration is the method by which water exits leaves through small openings called stomata. It evaporates from the leaves because of temperature, humidity, and other environmental factors. Cohesion is a property of water molecules that allows them to stick together. As one water molecule moves up through the xylem, it pulls another one along with it. Tension is created by negative pressure in the xylem, resulting from the act of transpiration from the leaves. Thus, transpiration, the loss of water from the plant leaves through the stomata, creates negative pressure at the top of the plant, resulting in tension which draws water upwards. Water's cohesion means each water molecule that rises because of this tension pulls another water molecule along. When these water molecules reach the leaves, they evaporate through transpiration, continuing the process. Water is brought from the roots up to the leaves by way of the xylem for the purpose of carrying out photosynthesis. 
During this process, the water is broken apart into hydrogen ions and oxygen atoms. The oxygen is released through the stomata as a waste product, and the hydrogen ions are used to fix carbon atoms into sugar molecules. This sugar is synthesized to be used as an energy source for the plants. Because photosynthesis takes place in the leaves and glucose is stored in the roots, there needs to be a mechanism in place to transport glucose back down the plant from the leaves to the roots. This is performed by the phloem. The newly created sugars diffuse into the nearest phloem tubes. The transport of materials through the phloem of vascular plants is called translocation, and phloem sap is the product being moved. These materials move from a source, the location in plants where the synthesized materials originate, such as leaves or roots that make the products, to a sink, the location in plants where the synthesized materials are transported, such as the roots, fruits or flowers, where the products are consumed. Like water moving into the xylem, the sugars in the phloem move through two main pathways, apoplastic and synplastic. Once the sugars reach the sink, they're moved into the surrounding tissues for storage and maintenance.